hello children today we are going to study the final part of this story golu grows a nose as you have seen in this story it is a wonderful story of a little elephant or you can say baby elephant and it is written by rudyard kipling a great author the story is a fiction that revolves around the growth of the trunk of an elephant from a snout a fictitious elephant golu is introduced in the story whose adventures are shared the opening lines of the story talk about the snout baby elephant golu he had no trunk but a bulgy nose golu was inquisitive and wanted to know how other animals are managing their lives he asked ostrich if it had ever flown as other birds do he inquired about the red eyes of the hippopotamus and the spotted skin of giraffe everyone had no answer to his difficult question once he asked maina about the food of the crocodile and it suggested he to visit the grassy limpopo river he went home and informed about his planning to visit the river he carried food for himself and after that we will study in the story what will going to happen now let's start the story in the earlier part of the story golu grows a nose we have study the story golu grow a nose is a very interesting jungle story where we learn how according to the writer elephants grew their long trunk or nose in this story we find various wild animals as characters in this story rudyard kipling is a master in jungle story as you all know and must have seen and read the famous jungle book where we find wild animals interacting with the human child named mowgli as far as the story is concerned it is also very interesting and totally fictional and also defying the principle of science The story revolves around a baby elephant named Golu who had a bulgy nose and no trunk at all. Golu represents the entire elephant species who had no trunk but only a bulgy nose according to Kipling. Later on how in order to uh, resolve his problem and due to his uh, curiosity comforts a cof- crocodile and finally draw out his trunk and the trunk of entire species long long ago now here we can see we have study in the earlier chapter earlier video two paragraphs the writer opens a story about the elephant before golu and informs us that earlier elephant did not have a long trunk all was there a bulgy nose and nothing else it was like a big boot which used to move from side to side when he moved it was of no use it could not even pick up anything with its nose once in the jungle lived a small baby elephant known as golu he had a trunk but only a bulgy nose the shape of the nose looked like a large boot and would sway from one side to another as he moved golu was very inquisitive just like all the children had a ton of questions for all the elder animals all around him 
He was full of different kinds of questions for each and every other animal as soon as he would meet them he would try to get answers for his questions all his questions were very true and genuine he asked question about things which seemed peculiar to him and on most of the occasions none of them had answer to the questions one day he met the ostrich and asked a question which was very genuine ostrich had feathers just like any other bird and golu was forced to ask the question the ostrich whom he called aunt why don't ostrich fly just like other bird because they too have feathers so they should go to thought so he asked the question to his aunt ostrich to this question ostrich had no answer at all later on he met a giraffe and seeing all the spots on the tall animal he asked his uncle giraffe why are there so many spots on your skin uncle golu was a keen observer and his question were result of such observation which he had about his uncle and aunt animal giraffe also had no answer to his question after some time he met his uncle hippo who was very large in shape and size golu asked him why are your eyes always red in color the hippo was surprised to hear the question but did not have reasonable answer to golu question so golu moved on and met a baboon or rather his baboon uncle baboon are hairy monkey species and the fruit melon are one of their favorite so he asked the baboon why do you melon taste like a melon and not like a, any other fruit the uncle baboon was answer less yet again all the element animals who knew golu and sometime or other had comforted golu and had been answerless to his questions were troubled and expressed that golu was a naughty child who asked so many question to which none of us have any clue now let's move to the next paragraph one day golu met the mena bird sitting in the middle of the bush and he asked her what does the crocodile have for dinner the mina said go to the bank of the great grassy limpopo river and find out golu went home he took a hundred sugar canes 50 dozen bananas and 25 melons then he said to his family goodbye i am going to the great grassy limpopo river i'll find out what the crocodile has for dinner he had never seen a crocodile and didn't know what one looked like he met a python and asked him have you ever seen a crocodile what does he look like what does he have for dinner now here in two paragraph we can see golu was very very inquisitive and was always searching for answers answers were something he did not get from any of his aunt of uncle he was very depressed that no one was able to answer of or help him out some time later as he met the mina bird in the jungle golu as his nature was soon asked the mina about the crocodile he asked what does the crocodile eat for dinner mina was a very cunning bird who knew everything about the dangerous animal crocodile instead of warning golu 
to stay away from the crocodile the miner suggested that golu should go to the banks of the great grassy limpopo river where the crocodile lived and see what he eats for dinner why did miner give such a dangerous suggestion to the baby elephant is not told by the writer in the lesson this incident can be taken down as a lesson to all the children that they should take advice from other people but before trying them out they should think over it properly after review, uh, receiving the advice from the maina golu quickly made up his mind to go to the place where the crocodile lived in order to find the answer to his question golu started preparing to take on a long journey to the river bank he gathered 100 sugar canes 50 dozen bananas and 25 melons because he thought that the journey to the limpopo river was a long one having collected all the provisions for the journey he said goodbye to his family members he informed them he was going to get the answer to one of his question and the miner had shown a way to find an answer to his question he had never seen a crocodile having dinner he did not know what he had for dinner in fact we learn that golu had never seen a crocodile this meeting was going to be an interesting one because golu was on a journey to find someone whom he had never seen or never knew what and that thing looked like he left his home and proceeded on the expedition of finding answers to his questions as he moved further in jungle he met a python python snake who was hanging in the large tree Golu approached him and asked the snake, "How does a crocodile look like? Why does he eat for din- what does he eat for dinner?" The python said, "Nothing, but just uncoiled from one branch and moved to another branch and then again coiled it itself to it." The python had understood that baby elephant had an embarked on a dangerous expedition so he kept quiet and said nothing but deep in his mind he was cautious about golu so golu bade his goodbye and moved along his way now in this picture you can see In next part of the story we can see Golu meets a crocodile face to face he gets a python help when he needs it most Golu grows a long and useful nose Golu moved on eating sugar canes bananas and melons after a few days he reached the very edge of the great grassy limpopo river on the bank of the river he saw a log of wood it was really the crocodile who winked at him excuse me said golu have you ever seen a crocodile the crocodile winked again and lifted half his tail out of the mud Come here little one said the crocodile why do you ask such questions i want to know come close little one for i am the crocodile and he shed crocodile tears to show it was quite true golu was afraid 
but he sat down on the bank and said you are the very person i was looking for please tell me what you have for dinner come here little one and i will whisper the answer to you said the crocodile golu put his head down close to the crocodile's snout and the crocodile caught him by the nose i think said the crocodile today a baby elephant will be my dinner let me go you are hurting me mr crocodile screamed golu the python who had been quietly following golu came to the bank and said if you do not pull as hard as you can the crocodile will drag you to into the stream now i am going to explain this chapter this paragraph now here you can see after asking to the python he moved in the on the way to limpopo river his journey was long one and it took golu several days to reach the limpopo river bank on the way he had eaten most of his provision the sugar canes bananas and the melons so at last he was at the end of the exploration he reached the place where the mina had told him that he would find the crocodile he saw no one but only a log floating near the bank of the river soon after he saw the log pop up the water golu suddenly realized that he had reached the right place the log was no other than the crocodile itself she seeing golu winked at him soon golu started asking his question have you seen the crocodile he asked the crocodile himself the crocodile again winked at him and lifted his tail out of the water and started planning to call golu close to him come near me you are so many question he finally gave the answer to golu's question i am the crocodile i am the one whom you have been looking for you see here are my crocodile tears he showed all this in order to convince and persuade golu to come into the water near the crocodile but there was something suspicious in the whole argument and golu did not like the way the crocodile wanted him to come near him into the water so he sat down on the bank of the river and told him that he had come a long way in search of the crocodile and he had just one question for him about what do you have for dinner this was the opportunity that the cunning crocodile had been waiting for he told golu please come close to me and i will whisper the answer into your ears golu was a child and unknown to the craftiness of the outer world he was tricked into believing in the crocodile's deadly scheme and he stepped into the water here you can see
Golu put his down, put his head down close to the crocodile's snout, and the crocodile caught him by the nose. He stepped into the water and went close to the crocodile, and lowering his head, put his ear near the crocodile mouth. At once, without losing any time, the crocodile grabbed Golu's nose, while which was bulging out in his big face. The crocodile had his dinner at hand. He spoke out to Golu, "Today I am going to eat a baby elephant for my dinner." The crocodile's teeth were buried into Golu's big nose, and he cried out, "You are hurting me! You are hurting me, crocodile! Please let me go. Leave me." Now here you can see the python, who had been quietly following Golu, came to the bank and said, "If you do not pull as hard." as you can the crocodile will drag you into a stream now the python who had been following him in order to help golu cried out to him pull yourself hard out of the water otherwise he will pull you inside the water fully and eat you now Let's move to the next part of the story. Golu sat back on his little haunches and pulled and pulled. The crocodile slipped into the water, making it all creamy with great sweeps of his tail. And he also pulled and pulled. Then the python coiled himself round Golu's stomach and said, "Let's pull harder." Golu dug in all his four legs into the mud and pulled. The nose kept on stretching. At each pull, the nose grew longer and longer, and it hurt Golu. The nose was now. Five feet long, but it was free at last. Golu sat down, with his nose wrapped up in a big banana leaf, and hung it in the great glassy limpo river to cool. Golu sat there for two days, waiting. For his nose to cool and to shrink, it grew cool, but it didn't shrink. At the end of the second day, a fly came and stung Golu on the shoulder. Golu lifted his nose, and with it hit the fly dead. Advantage number. One, he's the python. He couldn't have done it with a small nose. Try to eat a little now. Golu put out his trunk and plucked a large bundle of grass. He dusted it against his four legs and stuffed into his mouth. Advantage. Number two, he's the python. You could not have done it with a small nose, don't you think? The sun is too hot now. Golu scooped up some mud from the bank and slapped it on his head. Advantage number three, he's the python. You couldn't have done it with a small nose. Thank you, Mr. Python," said Golu gratefully. "I will remember all this 
and now i'll go back to my family golu understanding the <coughs> situation sat down firmly on the river bank and started pulling himself out of the water the whole incident looked like a tug of war where both animal were pulling each other into different direction the crocodile was now in a muddy section of the bank but he still kept a good hold on golu's nose and kept on pulling the python also arrived to help golu he called itself around golu's stomach and encouraged golu to pull harder golu got encouraged and putting himself firmly into the ground started pulling itself from the crocodile suddenly something very unexpected started happening golu's nose which was being pulled by the crocodile in the opposite direction started stretching like an elastic or rubber tube golu kept on pulling and after a short while his nose had become longer like a thick pipe after 5 about 5 feet long now here you can see the nose kept on stretching at each pull the nose grew longer and longer and it hurt golu the nose was now 5 feet long but it was free at last it was also hurting him but at last the crocodile who was no longer able to hold on any longer let go of golu's nose which by now had turned into a trunk golu was free from the crocodile's hold golu sat down by the river side with his long trunk into the water to cool down and relieve him of the pain he had been having he sat there for two days so that his nose would cool down and shrink but it did not cool down but never shrunk back in shape of a nose as he was seated near the river bank a fly came and started irritating golu by continuously sitting on his shoulder at once golu swinged his trunk and struck the fly dead so golu wanted to eat something so he reached out and plucked a bundle of grass with the help of his trunk cleaned it by lifting it on his legs and ate it after a little by staying in the sun he stretched feeling very hot so he soaked some muddy water from the river bank and put it over his head cool down in a very quickly the python who was with him all the time and had seen golu using his trunk in three different ways and the python encouraged him how this new tool in the shape of the trunk nose had helped you in so many ways thank the python and started to move back to the ward towards his home so in this way we find how the elephant nose grows or grew into a long trunk 
as we see it today.